one tribe, a reminder of a place once lived, where real equality and community existed, free from judgment, free from the system of fear and control, a place where connection can lead to possibilities, and a space where creativity has no restrictions, a path through the unknown, not knowing where one's going to end up, but having the faith of knowing things are going to work out, a realization that the ocean is a thread that connects all the lands and all the tribes of people, a feeling of being connected to something greater than one's own singular life, a greater realization that no man is an island, instead a critical piece that makes up this collective consciousness, a part of time where the past, present and future coexist, a place of magic where thoughts become things, a greater understanding that by living in harmony with nature, one gains a healthy mind, body and spirit, a universal space where energy, frequency and vibration merge into one, and a great knowing that together as one, we can make a difference. Welcome to One Tribe. I think it, I think you've got to be willing to to make sacrifices, but I suppose you probably don't call them sacrifices if you if you want it bad enough. It's just something you got to do to to make it. You, you got to um, commit yourself fully. Like I don't think there's there's many people that make it who have just got you know did their toe in the water. You got to you got to jump in wholeheartedly and, and chase what you want. I think to the more you can actually believe in what you're trying to do. If you, you think if you actually believe it's a genuine possibility, and it's you're halfway there. You know. Whether you're a chance or not, if you, if you believe, then I think you're halfway there. Work towards it, for sure. No, there's definitely talent. There's definitely people that got it. And then there's people that don't really have it, but their effort's better than the people that have got it. <laughs> and it sort of brings them to a level. <laughs> They're on the same level then, you know? Does that make sense? So, yeah, I've got blokes that their talent's quite low, but their effort's bloody amazing and I rate them sometimes higher. No, I rate them higher than someone that's got talent and doesn't have any effort. But then you get the one that comes in that's got talent, that's got effort, say like Jazz, Jared Blair, like he's got both. And that's why he's at the level he's at because he applies them both. And it's, it's a good question because I suppose Jared being from our club or, or locally, especially his family, you, you watch his journey all along the way. And there's a lot of people that have, but I think the key thing that stands out for me is the commitment and the dedication that someone like Jazz has put in into the game, but in the same context, how much time he's put into his family as well. So he's been able to manage that really well. I mean, he gave up a lot. They give up the world to, to get to the level that they have at AFL. But And also, I, I look at his mum and dad, I go, how much they've given up and the time they've put in to be able to give him the opportunity more than any, it's not about making him get there, it's about giving him the opportunity to get there. And so if I break that back down to like local sport, when I played them, I didn't have any aspirations of being any higher level than what we were, but now I suppose involved in sport coaching and stuff is that you just want to provide them the opportunity to be at the best they can be, not compared to anyone else as such, but just the best they can be. And I think growing up in the local community and hanging around with your mates, you're always trying to do something for someone. You're always looking out for them or whatever. And, and that's how I am now as a coach. It's about what I can do for them, not so much what I can do about myself, but to be able to give them the chance and the opportunity to be their best and provide the tools, I suppose. And that's where the, the sporting clubs and that play a real significant role and I think Jared's an amazing story, an absolutely amazing story of where he's come from and, and, and the challenges he's had along the way. But I think it's his commitment from himself and his family that's really given him that. Yeah, he worked hard, he had a little bit of luck here and there, you know, had a little bit of luck, but that's because he worked so hard. So I suppose he started with us and went to Gibby Power and they gave him an opportunity and then big country and then yeah, got that opportunity in 2010, I suppose, wasn't it? And, um, which really kick-started his long career and really successful career. And it's nice to know that that come from grassroots footy. Folks like Charlie Ware and that sort of, yeah, leading him the way and teaching him the ropes and, 
and it's yeah, it, it's an amazing story, amazing story. It's not something you think about when you do join a community, I reckon. It's sometimes not until you actually get involved in it do you realise how much you get out of it personally. So the importance in people getting out and about to, to meet people is you know good for your health, I suppose. And to be able to contribute and make a really good pathway and really good culture for your family to grow up in and for other people's family to grow up in. I don't overthink it too much, but I just go, well, if we're not doing it, who's going to do it? And, and making sure that we've got those options for the kids and stuff. And, and you know, just recently, you know, we've had some challenges and, and it's your community and it's your, your sporting clubs or your your surfing clubs or your walking clubs are actually the ones that really kick in and give you a hand. So what we've been able to, I suppose, get out of the, the community clubs is, is something I go, well, geez, we need to put into it. We need to make sure that all these are options for other people and to get involved. So I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do without the community involvement. Um, sometimes I think I don't do enough. And then sometimes I'd say, I, I don't have enough time. <laughs> But uh, yes, our family, we love our family to be involved in, in anything you can outside of the house. So your decision on, on what you make on the ground is purely about your teammate. It's not about yourself. You give it all up. You give it all up because I want to do it for him. I want that first five minutes to set a tone that allows us to just drift through the whole mile. So the first opportunity we have to head out of the this guy is reckless, reckless, however, play for you parents to be there. And we'll come off the ground feeling really positive. Come on, boys! Come on, come on, guys! There's a lot of cliches, isn't there? Yeah, there's no me and team and all that sort of stuff, but individually, it's it, it doesn't matter how good you are individually. It's it's the effort of the team, like. What the team does collectively is what brings you the result, and whether that's result win or loss, it's about well, yeah. You have those days where you walk away and you go, "I look good as a team." That was a really good, yeah, really gelled and and worked together. And there's days where you walk away, and you go, "We just did that individually. We did it on our own." And the result might have actually been better on the scoreboard, but it's not better in your mind. So if we talk about wins and losses, a team team's critical, obviously, but. When you talk about what your team wants to be, it has to work together collectively as a group because you won't reach that target or be able to tick that box as such to, to go, yeah, we're, we're going in the right direction. And We were poor win-loss ratio this year, but there were some things that we really achieved and, and it was always based around the fact how we work collectively as a team and how we structured up and communication and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. And team can mean two people, can't it? Like you're playing tennis, you're playing doubles, or you're, you're out paddling a canoe and there's two of you. If one's dragging the chain, you know, you're not going to get there, are you? So it's really critical. In the family environment, if everyone's chicken away together, it'll, uh, it'll turn out all right at the end of the day. What do they say? It's 90% above the shoulders, and I really believe in that because I see fluctuations week to week and it's got nothing to do with your physical fitness, it's more about whether you're mentally prepared. So there's the mental side of that where you try to get them right mentally and get them in the right place to, to be their best they can be. So yeah, talent's important, I think. It's important, but so my drive is always about getting their effort at the highest it can be. And then it's whether you've got the talent to really step above that mark and be exceptional as a team. But um, I suppose for me and the group that I've had over the last three years, it's trying to provide them with the tools and like I'm organised, so hopefully they're organised and to make sure that they keep focused on giving their best effort every week. You know, that's how I gauge whether we're going all right, whether we have the effort. So the effort's got to come, like the effort's got to come from us as coaches or, or, the, or the club or the president, like everyone's got to be putting in the effort. So that's what you want to represent. So to be the best you can be is, yeah, getting that effort right. Grew up on the coast, spent probably the first eight years of my life in Cape Patterson and then moved into one faggy. Every summer was spent, you know, the channel at first surf, just cruising around, getting mad chafed with the boys. Of, I don't know, it's just like, I think for everyone that sort of grew up down there, it's just a, it's a happy place, you know, you go to the beach, you chill out. It's nice and relaxing and 
you get a little bit caught up in, in the bubble in Melbourne, I think, like trying to achieve your goals and so driven to, to get to where you want to go. And it's nice just to step back and, and go home and where it really does feel like the world slows down and, and have a surf. And, I mean, it's, it's I, I enjoy it too. You're always bumping into people that, you know, you don't go, go for a surf to expect to see Stevie Noble out in the water, but then, you know, you do and you have a chat for half her and talk a bit of shit and have a laugh, you know, it's, it's good fun. So I grew up in a pretty tight knit community. It's a lot of, a lot of good people where, where we're from and um, you probably, until you reflect on it, you don't probably realise, but it, it's the old, like it takes a village to raise a kid sort of thing, you know, like I, I've been blessed to have a great family, but then outside of that, we've got great family friends and they've got, they've got great friends and there's just a whole bunch of people just making sure everyone's on the right track and, you know, we're pretty lucky to come from where we come from because there is people always looking out for each other and, you know, willing to go to another level to help people and I do find that like Montague, UK Patterson, that whole Bass Coast community is pretty special like that. There's a lot of people willing to pitch in and help out and enjoy good times together too, so it's good. That sort of comes back to family as well, like Dad had played a lot of footy with the Blues, Montague Blues, and so brought up in that environment. But I think I started playing footy because my mates were and my mates locally and, and obviously in Montagu and around the traps. We all just go together for the same reason. So um, yeah, started playing, I suppose, because my mates were and um, the Montagu Blues was the place for us to go. There was two teams at the time, Rovers and Blues, but because of dad's history at the club, that's obviously the track I took and haven't left the club at all. I'm not sure that's a good or bad thing, but and the reason we, you know, why we stay and why we're there, I suppose it's a bit similar to why we're at Cape. You know, that's that real community involvement. It's been interesting. I've sort of spent the last couple of months not doing much, so you sort of find yourself wondering what's going on at times because you've had 10 years of structure and, you know, being told what to do and when to do it and what to think, and now you sort of get spat out the other side and you find your feet a little bit. But, yeah, I'm pretty excited to play at Port Melbourne and do a bit of coaching stuff and probably try and get back down here a little bit more and get involved with these boys as well, so yeah, I'm pretty excited by it actually, it'll be good. Yeah, we've been surfing the HR for 30 odd years. Jared's was like, what, 3995 area, local area. He played footy at the same footy club as I was at, but he was a fair bit younger. And then, yeah, we got pretty good mates with his family and stuff, so now the families are all pretty close. And, get the occasional surfing when Daz comes home and looking forward to his, his next stage. He might spend a bit more time down in the water, so that'll be fun. Obviously still living in Sandy. Jumped in the car reasonably early because there's a bit of traffic on the road and sort of got down and stopped in at mum and dad's and said good day and dropped the boys off. And yeah, so here we are. This is our sort of final tune up before round one. Been at it since probably mid-November, so looking forward to get, getting stuck it's in tricky. and a good day on Saturday. Hey mate. Stevie, streak. Ground's looking like Yeah, I'll Yeah, mate. Love you. Pidzy. How are you, mate? Big shoulder. How are you, mate? Big T set. Must be round one, what's going on? Uh, perfect time. Howdy ace. It's a, re it's a really healthy spot for the footy club to be in, boys, isn't it? and it's a credit to all you fellas for getting down here and tipping in. And it's going to drive the standard at both levels, which we should be excited about. For driving each other, you know, we're still playing team footy, but we're driving each other. We're going to win more games of footy, and winning's pretty fun. And watch it, watch the buzz around the place. We come in, you know, the juniors have had a couple of wins. Our senior boys have had a couple of wins. We get next door and have a few beers. The buzz will be unbelievable. So keep driving each other, keep turning up. And like Hangers is saying, it's, we might just have, a, have to have our turn to have a week off every now and then. But things are going to happen. Injuries, sickness, other things will pop up. So just keep putting your hand up, tricker. And I think we've, we've spoke about it across the three practice matches that we've played. Like one thaggy power footy is what's going to get us 95% of the way. It's the other little details that will help, but it's just the stuff like you're saying, Fox, harder for longer. 
Teams know they've played against my faggy every time they roll up. And let's really start to, to build this ground as a fortress. We've got to go down to my faggy this week and play those boys. Let's make it rough on them, all right? Um, and I reckon I heard the mids mention too, they said there was something about forget, forget about the talent. I think that's a pretty, that can be a pretty strong theme for, for this group for the whole year. Because there's a lot of talent here. If we, we forget about the talent and we just bring the effort and intensity, talent's all a bonus. We can go wherever we want, so. I think, you know, we spoke Thursday night at selection that attitude is everything. You know, if, if, if you're amongst a group and, and your attitude isn't right, well, it's going to be taking you further away from where you want to be. And we're lucky that we do have a group that get on with it. You know, if things don't go their way, they get back to work and get after it. So, proud of the boys so far. Um, and I think the attitude they have at the minute is going to take us a long way. So, I'm looking forward to seeing where we go. It was good, yeah, I think. Obviously everyone's pretty up and about round one in a couple of days and it's been a you know, longish pre-season, probably done three of them since our last actual premiership points game. So everyone was up and about and trainers expected. It was good, mate. It was a good way to tie up the pre-season and launch a hopefully successful campaign. I'm excited, yeah, I'm excited, I'm nervous. Yeah, I'm just pretty keen to get stuck into it, to be honest. It's, it's been a long time coming, and I've been away for 12 or so years, and I've always loved coming back to watch the boys have a hit out, and now to be pulling the jumper on again for the uh, first time in a long time. I'm, yeah, I'm, I mean, I've, if I said I wasn't nervous, I'd be lying, I'm a bit antsy, but keen to get out there and get amongst it, yeah. Nervous energy wherever you go, like you you, you you want to be slightly uncomfortable in whatever you're doing or else it probably doesn't mean enough to you. And yeah, I, I think it's the expectations you put on yourself is the main thing. So it doesn't matter if you're at the MCG or you're at one fag, it's, you want to perform and you want to do well for your teammates and, and for the footy club. So yeah, I'm excited and sort of feel like this day's been coming for, for a long time and glad to be here. Well look boys, look at your numbers. Spreading around the ground, it's good. I reckon too, our ball movement's been pretty good. It's not the easiest conditions, and we've still been taking it on. Right. But Ferg finding those little short 45s, yeah, so I think we're going to run On the bagger, it's good. Pretty simple again, we've just got to keep turning up. Pressure on the ball. McCullum now is trying to work Tom Aranda and just club it wide. So make sure our, our forwards and backs that are near the contest, make sure you're aware of that. I think I've learned so far there's going to be ups and downs and that's sort of day to day, you know, there's going to be frustrations and um, you just got to let it wash over you at times and look at the bigger picture um, and make sure that we are as a group all tracking in the right direction, which you know, I'm quite confident that we are. So 2006 is here playing footy, uh, 2010 he's playing an AFL granny and then 2021, he's playing footy with us. So 15 years, long time, but he hasn't actually grown much and he doesn't look like he's got too old, so it's really positive. No, he's, he's looking sharp, he's in really good nick and he's in a happy place, so it's nice to have him home. Okay. 
I mean, playing playing coaching role is yeah unique in a sense. It's can be challenging at times. You're out there trying to perform and play well and get a kick, but there's so much more that goes with it. You got to make sure that everyone else is on task as well and, and doing what they need to do. But you know, I'm pretty comfortable in. in I'm well supported by you know, Tristan Francis, Dom O'Connor and Daniel Hawking. Wealth of knowledge and well respected by the group, so it makes my job pretty easy. You fool, Jared? Yeah, good, good. Ah, Jordan. Look at that, give me the play. Back. Well done. Mason, come back. Get a try. Well done. Yep. Get around, Hazy. Oh, I mean, there's lots of elements we're trying to still in the boys, I think. Um, first and foremost, I, I think Montagui always plays a special brand of football and we're really trying to bring that out. Um, it's hard, it's tough, sort of crack in. Um, it's probably at times, you know, compensated for maybe not having the same level of talent as other sides. It keeps us in the game always. Um, so we're just trying to bring that out in the boys, you know, effort and intensity. Um, but we're also trying to encourage them to take the game on, use their strengths, um, play footy the way that they feel suits them. Um, not trying to make someone fit into a box, you know, if they're good at something, we'll encourage them to do it. I look back on my own journey, I think as a young man, I had belief naturally, whether it was just youthful arrogance, you know, I think it, it goes a long way. And over time, you can find that society sort of chips away at that, but, you know, we're, we're here to really build that belief in our group because it should be there. The talent's there, the work ethic and, and the want is there. So I think if we can add a bit of belief to the group, uh, we can go wherever we want to go. And also, you know, you, you've got to believe it can happen first before it does. You can't. You won't just stumble across winning a premiership, you've got to believe you can get there and work towards it, so that's what we're doing. Nah. Can I back on? Change <laughs> Hazy, is it? Yeah, it's unreal. Unreal feeling to get the win out of the way. You know, it's been a pretty long build up and first game of footy boys have played for near two years, so really proud of them to, to, to get the win today. It's good just to tick it off, you know, it sort of builds belief in what we're doing and we can just get into it now, keep grinding away and get stuck into the season and uh, hopefully keep ticking more off. Oh, it's awesome to see it. And then the buzz, and then there's momentum, and then there's more members, and things start ticking over and it's a positive, a real positive outcome for the club. I think I've had one year away from the club where I haven't sort of been involved and which is always a bit tricky because it's, it's such a habit being at the club. It's a winter sport so it, it suits the surfing lifestyle I suppose and not that I don't stop surfing during winter but yeah, it's a place and, and my family, my, my girls all are now playing football and netball at the club as well so a bit of family involvement there which, which hopefully continues on.